Hey, what's up guys, Betty here, and welcome to another Call of Duty Warzone video. With one of the most important things to learn in this game before you even hop into a match is all about the settings that you have available to you. Now, I'm not talking about the nitty gritty basic settings such as changing your sensitivity up and down, but I'm talking about the settings that change how the game plays, game mechanics, and how you interact and see the world around you within Warzone. So in this video, I'm going to take you through 17 settings that you can find within your menus and how to take advantage of them. Some you might want to do and some you might not. It's all down to personal preference, though I promise you, take advantage of some of these settings that you'll learn about in this video and you'll come out a much better player in the long run, get an advantage over other players and we'll start winning more games of Call of Duty Warzone, which is what we all want. Oh yeah, and apparently 96.7% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, so subscribe and I guarantee you'll get your next win. I promise. So you'll have probably noticed in Warzone, under your controller settings, you now have a Battle Royale button layout, which is separate to your multiplayer settings. Now, they've done this because of a new controller layout that's been added into the game in the last week called Bumper Ping. This is actually a really strong button layout to use because it places the ping on your left bumper. And if you're able to accurately ping enemies properly, which is very hard to do with ping being on your D-pad, you and your teammates gain that advantage of getting the red ping tracker for a few seconds on your opponents whilst enemies are in lines of sight, which allows you to take them down a lot easier and also stops potential miscommunication, which could get your squad killed. If you play default traditionally, there is zero reason that you shouldn't be using this layout. For us tactical players, however, we still have to wait until a tactical variant is added into the game or continue to ping via a paddle on an elite controller or scuff. Another cool setting you should look at using if you mainly use a PlayStation controller is the trigger flip, which makes R1 and L1 become your ADS and fire buttons, which are, in my opinion, a little bit more responsive than the back triggers. It does take a while to get used to, but is definitely worth it. Just press square whilst you're looking at your controller layout. Now, I don't want to talk about sensitivity in this video too much, as I did cover that in my personal Warzone setup video, but I do want to touch on the ADS sensitivity multiplier, which is something you should be taking advantage of, especially if you're a high sensitivity player. Because of the distances that you get into fights in Warzone, you really want to be able to make small adjustments to your aim, and this setting allows you to do exactly that. If you play on a 10 sensitivity, for example, the ADS sensitivity multiplier down to a 0.5, and you effectively have a five sensitivity whilst aiming down sights, which is going to make you much more accurate in those medium range gunfights and are going to be able to control your recoil a lot easier. It's a small setting that most players overlook as most people usually just adjust their horizontal and vertical stick sensitivities, so make sure to try it out. The next setting in Warzone that a lot of players overlook is controller vibration, which in my opinion, this should always be left off. Purely because the vibration of your controller can sometimes just throw off your aim. It can be cool at times, I'm not gonna lie, but if you want those wins, make sure that it's off. These next two settings are only available to PC controller players, but will hopefully be available to console in the future and is still important to be aware of as you'll likely come up against it in a crossplay match, and that's the field of view slider. PC players are able to have the ability to adjust their field of view, which then allows you to see more of what's going on around you, which is, as you can imagine, incredibly helpful. I personally, when playing on PC, play on 94, which is what I'm used to from playing Apex Legends on console. The downside at the start of Warzone is that the wider field of view you had, the smaller targets became so they could feel harder to hit. However, a new setting has been added in the latest update called Scale Aim Assist with Field of View. This removes that negative and gives you that same level of aim assist with a wide field of view that you would have whilst playing on a console. By default, this setting is off, so make sure it's turned on if you're on PC and you're going to get a significant advantage. The next setting that you need to make sure that you have in Call of Duty Warzone is Contextual Tap. Now, this is just one of those settings that you're going to have heard of a lot because by the simple slide of a button in the settings menu, you're instantly 
a better Call of Duty Warzone player. The default setting of hold just gives you an instant disadvantage because you loot slower, you get into vehicles slower, you do everything in the game slower than someone that just turns their use slash reload behavior to contextual tap. So if you do one thing from this video, make sure to turn this setting on. It took me a couple of games to get used to, but trust me, you'll be able to move around the world and loot so much faster than before. It's just going to help you win more games. So this next setting is one that I didn't actually touch during my settings video and is one I've only just started using in the past couple of days and I've already noticed a big difference and that's the slide behavior setting. You have two options, hold to slide or tap to slide. You want to have tap for a couple of reasons. Firstly, you can just trigger that slide a lot quicker, meaning in those clutch moments in a gunfight, it could just make the difference as there's just something about the slide animation that makes it difficult to track with aim assist properly. So it just throws off enemy player shots. Secondly, sliding actually allows you to move around the map faster as you switch between doing a tactical sprint and then slide, which is why you'll notice a lot of top Warzone players sliding a lot when moving around the map, even when not in a gunfight. And having this setting set to tap will just allow you to do the same much, much easier. It's something that I originally missed when setting up my settings, but definitely does help out. Another setting that I missed that you want to start using is auto move forward. When you first read it, it just sounds terrible. Why in the world would I ever want to get my character to just automatically move forward? It's just going to move me out of cover and get me killed. However, it's perfect for when you're working with your teammates as you just double tap your thumbstick forward twice quickly to start auto move. Then you can easily drop things like plates, money and ammo for your teammates whilst on the move towards the buy station, saving you precious time. It's a nice little trick. Another setting that you'll want to play around with is vehicle camera recenter. By default, this is turned on, but it means that it can be difficult to perform certain driving maneuvers. Disable it and you have complete manual control, which from my experience helps you to track enemies, get more kills and just be a better driver. So just make sure to give it a go. Then our next setting has just been added into the game, which you're going to have a love hate relationship with because if i'm completely honest whilst you learn to really push the boundaries with it you'll probably end up killing yourself quite a bit and that's the parachute auto deploy setting if you want to be the best call of duty warzone player possible you really want to make sure that you've got this switched off meaning you can pull the shoot as close to the ground as possible beating enemy players to loot or contracts so just don't forget to pull it. It's the worst way to start a game by asking your teammates to pick you back up because you didn't pull your shoot. Then the next setting you want to change in Warzone to get another advantage on your opponents is to change your minimap from circle to square. This actually gives you more minimap coverage so you can see what's going on in the corners so you don't miss any potential red dots. A small change, but can be a lifesaver. This next setting is actually personal preference depending on what you find most comfortable as there's pros and cons for both and that's whether you have minimap rotation on or off. If it's on, you can clearly tell where your teammates are on the map, but can't give clear callouts by saying north, south, and east, for example, just from a glance at your minimap, which you can do with it disabled. So see what works best for you. Personally, I prefer having rotation on and using the compass at the top of my screen for directional callouts. Plus, when you learn the map more, you'll just know exactly where everything is anyway. The next settings that I really recommend turning off for Call of Duty Warzone are in your graphic settings and those are world and weapon motion blur. These by default are switched on and don't get me wrong, they look cool in a cinematic way but they just make it so much more difficult to be able to clearly see what's going on around you. And with Call of Duty Warzone being quite a twitchy game, having these off will massively help. And whilst you're there, talking about settings that make it harder to be able to see everything properly in the game world, you'll also want to turn film grain off, which just adds noise to the world, which makes things less clear and sharp. Yeah, it looks nice, but if you're trying to rack up those wins and want to be able to clearly see your opponents, make sure that this is 100% off. 
Next, one of the coolest features with Warzone that I don't see enough players try out is the fact that you can actually try every input on console and PC. If you've never experienced Call of Duty with a mouse and keyboard before, this is the perfect time to do so. Just plug your mouse and keyboard into your Xbox or PS4 and you're good to go. It's definitely a different change of pace that I quite enjoy from time to time, so give it a go. You'll then want to head over to your audio settings to choose an audio mix. This is one of the most important decisions that you can make whilst playing Call of Duty Warzone, as you want the ability to be able to hear enemy footsteps, gunshots and enemy vehicles as clearly as possible to give you that advantage in gunfights. So I recommend trying out Boost or Boost High on the audio mix to see what works best for your individual audio setup, but it's definitely a setting that you should play around with. The other setting you might want to play around with is crossplay. Having it on is going to allow you to play with a larger player base, but having it off means you'll only have to play against people on your platform, which can be beneficial as PC players do at times have an unfair advantage. I have it on as I personally play with friends on loads of different platforms, which is cool, but choose what works best for you. But there we have it, 17 settings that you definitely need to make sure you check out in your settings menus. Everyone is going to have different preferences, but taking advantage of these will make you a better Warzone player. If you want to see exactly what I have, make sure to check out my other settings video on the channel. Subscribe if you're new for more Warzone videos, including tips and tricks, and let me know what settings you use down in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time.